Hey fellas, welcome back to the channel. Uh, today's video is the first wash video after we did our correction on the Corvette. Uh, just a real quick recap. Um, we washed the car, strip washed the car using uh, Purple Power vehicle and bolt wash. After that, we decontaminated the car using CarPro Iron X. After that, we rinsed that off. We clayed the car using uh, 3M Perfected Clay with Adam's Detail Spray. Then we went ahead and rinsed, rinsed that off and uh, wiped the car down with uh, Gion Prep. From there, we went ahead and polished the car using a Max Shine 15 millimeter DA polisher with a five inch yellow Rupes pad. We also use as a polisher the Adams Mini Swirl Killer 3 inch with a yellow Rupes 3 inch pad. Uh, we did a simple one step correction on the car. We used a Sonax Perfect Finish and just went around the car, did our one step. Then we wiped the car down with uh, Gion Prep. After that, we put one layer of uh, Power Lock Plus on the car. Waited about three hours or so, and uh, yeah, about three hours. Yeah, about three hours. We waited about three hours, and then we put our first layer of uh, Colonite 845 on the car. Now, on Colonite's website, it says to wait 12 to 24 hours between our next coats before we apply another coat. I actually had to wait 48 hours before I put a second coat on the car because uh, work was calling and uh, you know I had to tend to uh, what really makes my bread so I um, had to go to work and I just didn't have time to, uh, to put that second coat on there. So about 48 hours later went ahead and put a second coat of uh, Colonite 845 and so that's where we are today. We need to wash the car, and uh, you'll see the colonite had a reaction um, with the power lock, I guess. I mean, that was the, the rumor that that could happen, so it happened. It didn't happen on the first coat, but it did happen with the second coat. So we'll go outside and take a look at the car. But I'm gonna go ahead and start uh, filling up my buckets so that uh, water's on, so that we can go ahead and get rolling on this. So this is just my wheel bucket. I kind of changed up my style a little bit. I use uh, Adam's wheel cleaner, I'm sorry, Adam's wheel cleaner, Adam's shampoo, and I actually put water in my wheel bucket, whereas before, I didn't do that, I just would, uh, use the bucket basically as a, a brush holder, you know, but now I actually put some water and Adam's shampoo in there. So that's good. Go ahead and move that out the way. And uh, we'll start filling up our wash buckets. I just kind of want to get all of this uh, ready to go so that when we start um, when we start the wash process it moves kind of quickly so I'm just filling this up with regular uh, tap water right now like I said so that when we get going I, it kind of cuts down on some of the time. So, as you can see, that's my bucket filler idea. I can open that all the way up or just kind of let it flow in there, right? And then switch this around. Get some water in there. Today we'll also be using our PF22 foam tennis, so I'll get some water 
in here. I like to put a little bit of water in here. I will wait on the shampoo, but I like to get a little bit of water in there right off the top so that the uh, Adam shampoo doesn't stick to uh, the bottom of the PF22. So let's go ahead and go outside. I'll show you the car, uh, show you the reaction that the uh, Colonite had with the uh, PowerLock Plus. All right, let's go. All right, guys, so here we are. Here's a car, it's kind of dusty. I drove it this week. And out here in California, like I said, we've been having, uh, it's been really hot and we've been having fires. And uh, so that's a lot of dust and ash on the car. I'm trying to get a shot for you guys so you guys can see the reaction. Oh, there we go. The reaction of the uh, cola night. Hopefully that's coming through in the camera. I don't know if you guys can see that haze, the swirl marks. And it's kind of like that all over the car. But like I said, that didn't happen until the second coat of uh, Colonite 845. So let's go ahead and get back set up on the tripod. And we'll get started with the wash. We'll get going with the wheels and tires. And uh, we'll move on from there. Um, we're going to go ahead and get these uh, wheels and tires done. As you can see, we are washing in direct sunlight today. We kind of don't have a choice. Um, it's just what it is. And, you know, I can't keep waiting to, to wash the car. I'm going out tonight. Me and the wife are going out. So I um, want to take the Corvette and it needs to be washed because I need to get that that uh, whatever that reaction is that the colonite had with the power lock need to get that off the car so we just gonna jump into it I'll do this first wheel and then stop the video go ahead and go around and uh, do the other three wheels and tires so my procedure has kind of been the same you know, with the addition of the uh, water in the bucket now, you know, so I go ahead and rinse the tires off, wheels and tires. This is super clean uh, degreaser. It is uh, mixed four to one, you know, with distilled water. So I'll go ahead and spray that on i don't use uh adam's wheel cleaner because uh you know i know i keep saying it but i really don't get a lot of dusting on the car on the wheels rather so i'll go ahead and let that sit for a few seconds and uh then scrub that off but yeah i'm pretty excited man about uh this is a tough shine tire brush, but I'm pretty excited to see the results of the uh, Power Lock Plus combination. See how it works out for me. I know everybody else loves it. So like I said, I wanted to do it to uh, see what it was all about and if I don't like it which I'm pretty sure I will if I don't like it I'll uh, go ahead and uh, strip wash the car again and uh, put the G on on there can coat because I'm still not ready to it's kind of tough to get back here I'm still not ready to do a full coating on this car this is an Adams wheel brush 
wheel well brush get up in the wheel wells but uh, it's kind of tight on the c7 the truck it works good and the uh, cls it works good as well all right and then i go ahead and this is incredible brush the flat i'll get in here get the barrels of the wheels I mean, I still have my easy detail brushes too in here. But with this uh, flat, I can still get behind the calipers. I don't have those huge, huge calipers like some, uh, some of the cars have. And then I'll just take this pad and get behind the uh, wheels backs of the wheels and that is it we'll go ahead and rinse this off and then uh, we'll move around to the other part to the other sides of the, or the front tires, front wheels and tires. And try and get this done pretty quick. So I'll bring you guys back after I do the other three. All right, guys, so we are back. Let's go ahead and get the car rinsed off so that uh, we can see what this uh, Colonite 845 or should I say Power Lock, Power Lock Plus, Colonite 845 combination is all about. So we are uh, just rinsing the car. This is uh, regular tap water. I'll use my deionizer after we uh, wash the car. But this is just regular tap water out of the AR, AR Blue. AR Clean Blue 2050 pressure washer, MTM. Done. So yeah, but I'm really excited about this. I haven't done a wash video in a while uh, for you guys. And like I said before, the procedure hasn't changed all that much. You know, still kind of doing the basic, the basic wash. But we, we went ahead and uh, rinsed the car, as you guys see. I got the buckets all ready to go. And uh, we'll get the foam cannon and we'll go ahead and foam the car. I kind of hate washing the car in direct sunlight, but kind of don't have a choice. Like I said, it's uh, been over 100 degrees every day. And uh, it's not going to let up. We are foaming the car using Adam's shampoo, PF22 foam cannon, uh, SGS 28 gun. 
go ahead and get this side done. Oh, and as you guys can see, I hope you can see those uh, detail guards. And that's what I was talking about as far as I thought they were kind of gimmicky, you know, as seen on TV, but uh, they actually work really well. It's about three ounces of uh, shampoo in here. And I think we got some pretty good foam there, all right? All right, let's go ahead and dump the rest of this in the uh, bucket, our uh, wash bucket. And then uh, we'll start washing the car. We'll let this sit for a couple minutes. Now I'm okay um, with it being in the sun. I mean, I'm still not okay with that, but I know that uh, I won't have any issues because the uh, Adam shampoo is pH neutral and uh, I can let it sit on the car for a second. So, and it won't water spot. So let's go ahead and dump this back into the wash bucket and uh, get moving on the wash. Let's go ahead and get this washed up. Just like everybody else, I start at the top of the car and I wash in uh, straight lines. Oh man, that's smooth though. You can already tell that uh, this is pretty smooth. The Colonite 845 power lock combination. I'm just hoping that, uh, you know, those swirls come off from that reaction. But, you know, I'm pretty sure they will. You know what, you can totally tell with the uh, slickness of this, because like I said, I've washed <laughs> for a long time now, and uh, Adam's alone is smooth, but uh, it didn't feel like this. This is really, really slick. So I think we got a winner here. And this um, is the Giant Smoothie that I'm using. It's actually the mitt, but uh, I don't really care for the mitt part. So I tuck the cuff inside and uh, use it as a pad and for this car it's pretty much like the perfect size to be used as a pad I love washing this car though, because it's so easy. You know, unlike the excursion, that tank, it takes a lot of effort to, uh, to get around there. It takes a long time. I mean, the longest part of this though, is drying it off. I will run it in the garage and we'll dry it in there. Try and get out the sun, even though technically, technically, I guess I don't have to rush and dry it because I'm using the uh, CR Spotless deionizer. And I shouldn't have uh, 
any water spots. You know, it should dry spot free. So I technically don't have to rush and dry it, but you know, I've never let the soap dry on the car. I mean the soap, of course I never let the soap dry on the car, but I never rinsed the car with the CR Spotless and uh, just let it dry naturally. You know, I've always, even though it was the CR Spotless, I've always hurried up and dried the car because who wants water spots, right? I hope you guys enjoy this series though. It's a pretty quick, I think I can get it into about four to five parts. And uh, we'll be good. So, hope you guys like it. I'm gonna try and get these videos out in the next couple days. Let's go ahead, we got the whole car washed down. Let's go ahead and uh, turn on the CR Spotless and uh, do our rinse. And then we'll bring the car in the garage and start drying. All right, guys, so if you guys watched uh, my car wash and product station video, we are using the CR Spotless. I went ahead and turned it on running some of the tap water out of the line, purging the line. And uh, let's go ahead and get this rinsed off. And I'll start at the top, just like I do in the normal, when I wash it. Start at the top of the car. And work my way around it. Technically, I shouldn't have to rush to rinse the car because technically, I shouldn't water spot using DI water. I'm just hoping that the colonite 845 comes completely off and like you guys saw initially. That reaction between the colonite and the 845 and the power lock plus so Hopefully, it comes off without a problem. If not, I guess we'll be doing it all over again. Strip washing and uh, polishing it off, but I think that residue will come off. Like I said, I don't have to be in a rush to dry the car off, but you know what? I've never, even using deionized water, I've never let the uh, car just naturally dry. I guess technically you're supposed to be able to, but that's just kind of scary to me. Because who really wants water spots on their car? Funny when I was a kid, man, driving and washing my cars and stuff. I never even worried about direct sunlight. But now, I act like if it's not perfect weather conditions, 
I can't wash the car, but it's just funny the transition that you make. All right. I think we got the car rents pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and pull it in the garage, close the garage, get it out of the uh, direct sunlight and dry the car off. All right, guys, we got the car back in the garage now and uh, initial inspection, I'm seeing the uh, colonite still sitting on the car. Uh, even though I washed it, I still have a lot of the residue on the car. So I'm gonna go ahead and dry it off with the uh, MetroVac blower. And uh, I'm hoping that when I go ahead and, uh, you know, do my uh, spray wax on the car, those will come out. So let's go ahead and get drying. And like I said, this MetroVac, it's actually pretty cool. I got the uh, MetroVac Revolution and it has the uh, 30 foot hose. But let's go ahead and start at the top. So we can get this off. And like I said, since I use DI water, I technically shouldn't have to uh, dry the car. But, uh, you know. I guess I'm a big chicken, because I don't want to let the uh, car just air dry naturally. Same procedure, top to bottom. The only thing about the Metro Vac, of course, is the hose. But other than that, And drives the car great. This is just the one motor. Let's go ahead and uh, in a second here, we'll go ahead and throw both motors on so you guys can see how that works. I know you heard the increased horsepower there. Pushing a lot of CFM now. But I won't keep you guys while I dry the entire car off. I turn one of the motors off, it's just kind of loud to be recording. But I won't keep you guys while I get around the car and dry it off. I'll bring you guys back when uh, I use my spray wax as a drying aid. I hope you guys know that I'll never lie to you. And um, 
you know, what you see with me is what you get. But my fears of the 845 stand on the car has uh, been realized here. Now, you know, I just dried the car off and I still have some of the uh, residue from the 845 left on the car. But I'm hoping that when as you guys can see, I think you can see that. When I use the uh, Optimum Spray Wax, this stuff comes off. So let's go ahead and get you guys on the tripod and uh, let's see what we have to uh, deal with. I can't lie to you. I'm I'm a little nervous, man. <laughs> I'm hoping this comes off, but let's check it out. All right, fellas. All right, let's see what happens here. We got our Eagle Edgeless Towels, our Optimum Spray Wax, and like I said, I'm hoping that the uh, Colonite comes right off the car. I'll use just a little bit. <laughs> and uh, see what happens here. Okay. <laughs> I guess I was a little premature with my fears. Oh, let me see. Well, before I speak too soon. Let's see. Well, I can still see a little, a little residue from the 845, but I guess I'm not going to worry about that right at this moment. Mm. It's got me shook. Let's move the camera and work on the uh, hood and see what we get there. gonna try and use too much of the product because the hood got it pretty pretty good on the hood it's uh it's wiping off maybe after a couple washes it'll fully fully come off But again, I've never used the uh, Optimum Spray Wax, nor the Colonite, or should I say Power, you say it in order, the Power Lock Plus in combination with the uh, Colonite 845. I'm actually having to put uh, considerable pressure 
on the car. To get this off. I don't know if it's just the, uh, the colonite. Or if it's uh, the optimum spray wax. That's the only thing about trying different products. You know, you kind of don't know what you're going to get. And I know I applied it correctly. I know that. So, hopefully I'm just being a little dramatic here. So we'll work this one panel at a time. And uh, we'll see what the outcome is. All right, guys, let me, uh, let me continue to uh, get around the car and uh, I'll bring you guys back in a sec. In all fairness, you know, I was sitting here working on the car and I said, hell, this is what it's all about, <laughs> you know, for us to share what our experiences are. That's the whole reason we're doing this, right? So um, it's making me work a little harder than what I'm used to working as far as uh, removing a product or um, uh, removing a wax off a car. I don't know that if I let it sit for too long because it's been probably a full week before I could get this product off the car. So I don't know if that had something to do with it. Not sure, you know, because like I said, this is the first time I'm using the product, but it is making me work a little bit harder to get the results or to get the product off the car. So I don't know, man. I'm not sure. I mean, I like the look, but, you know, I'm not sure at this moment. We'll get it out in the sunlight and see. I'm not sure that the results are worth the effort, but again, like I said, it's a little premature at this point, so we'll get it out in the sunlight and I could just be, you know, talking crazy and just not realizing that it takes a little bit more effort with uh, these products here. You know, I'm kind of just used to the, uh, the, uh, Polish Angel High Gloss, excuse me, and Polish Angel Rapid Wax. I'm kind of just used to how that goes on and comes off, you know. And I know there's a difference in the product, but I guess, like I said, I'm just used to the ease of that 
product line. But I just wanted to bring you guys back and share that thought with you. I'm gonna go ahead and finish this side of the car. There's lower panels, the lower panels, and jump over to the other side and hit those panels. And, uh, and then I'll bring you back for the wheels and tires. And then I won't bore you guys with the windows because windows are windows. And then we'll uh, take the car outside and take a look at it in the sunlight. Like I said, I'm not gonna worry about putting my mug in the camera, but uh, like I said, I was gonna take you guys through how I do my wheels and tires. What I use is a uh, Polish Angel Super Sport on the wheels. And uh, if you can go back in my videos and watch my uh, wheel cleaning video, it'll uh, explain exactly what's up with uh, the Polish Angel. But you can use it wet when the wheels are wet or when they're dry. And I'll go kind of either way. But since I've been using the MetroVac um, dryer, Revolution dryer, you know, I just go ahead and blow the wheels off too. And so I've been used, have a tendency to use it more on a dry surface. And I'll just spray it on. It doesn't take a lot, as you guys can see. I'll go ahead and spray it on and uh, get into the barrels, you know, with, get the spokes in between. And that's kind of how I apply the uh, Super Sport. It's really very easy to apply, as you saw. You don't need a lot of the product. You can just spray a little bit and uh, use your microfiber towel and uh, to pick it up and spread it all the way around the wheel. Also, what I've been using is Gion Tire. Let's see. Gion Tire on an Adams applicator. And I just take it and go around, put a couple squirts on there, and then go around the tire. And I also try and hit this little lip on the tire and again with uh, Gion it doesn't take much at all but I like the results like I said I actually on these Michelins I like the results better than I do the uh, Car Pro Pearl. Pirelli's, I use the uh, Car Pro Pearl. And so what I'll do after I apply it, normally I'll uh, go ahead and do all four wheels with the uh, Polish Angel Super Sport. And then I'll come back around and do all four tires. And by the time I get back to the original tire, I can go ahead and wipe it off the excess off until it gets to the finish that I like and it usually doesn't take long for me to get to that point you know like that I think uh, that looks good the tires look new and satiny satiny yep they don't look uh, wet or too shiny so that's how I do 
the wheels and the tires. I'm gonna go ahead and jump around the car, finish these up, and then uh, we'll pull it out and uh, let's critique it and see what uh, see what you guys think. All right, guys, I got you guys off the tripod and uh, the car is done. It's complete. And I know it probably looks really good on video, but that's because the car looks really good. Um, trying to be as steady as I can because I'm hand holding this camera trying to get you guys the video but it came out good man it came out better than good it came out great and uh, you know I guess that's the thing, right? The question is, is the effort worth it at the end of the day, right? All the effort that you put in, is it really worth the effort? And I'm gonna have to say it's definitely worth the effort. The car looks absolutely amazing. And I know it's probably, like I said, it's, it's, it's probably coming through amazing, but no BS, that's because the car looks phenomenal. So was the colonite and 845 a little more effort yes did it take a little bit longer yes did uh, using the optimum spray wax was that a little bit more work yeah it was a little bit different than using the uh, my standard polish angel high gloss or um, you know my wet coat application you know that's pretty quick this was a lot longer process you know polishing the car you know that took a little bit more time there's a couple spots on here that could have been done a little better but you know that's not the an issue with the max shine polisher or the uh Adam Swirl Killer. That's my uh, inefficiency or inexperience with polishing. But uh, everything worked out really, really good. And like I said, the car looks absolutely amazing. And would I do it again? Yeah. I'd do it again. Sorry about the uh, initial panic, <laughs> you know, when I saw the colonite still on the car, but uh, it did. It, it came off when I used the optimum spray wax, but you know, it was just like, damn, I got to do this all over again. And I really don't have time because I'm now I'm super busy at work again. And, you know, so I was, you know, I wasn't worried about getting it off of the car. I was just worrying about taking the time to have to do it all over again. But uh, yeah, man, it's phenomenal. Like I said, there's a couple spots on here that may could have been done a little better as far as the polishing goes. Right but that's just me not having enough experience you know not being a professional but overall i think i did a heck of a job on it you know 
doing that one step with the Sonex perfect finish so but you know how it is the more we do it the better we'll get so I just wanted to show you guys the end result you know the end result is pretty freaking good man I'm pretty happy with the end result so yeah thank you guys man thanks for uh hanging in there with me thanks for uh tuning in i hope you guys enjoyed this little four or five part series i'm not sure at this point i'm going to edit all the video and uh get it out to you guys as soon as possible but uh yeah i'm happy so thanks a lot guys and i will see you guys on the next video have a blessed day